Hello and welcome to the Ramon Foster Show, starring the one, the only Ramon Foster in Hendersonville, Tennessee. I'm Dan Kovacevic in Pittsburgh. And Ramon, we now know the four teams that are going to be participating in the conference championships. I have a couple questions for you today related to these. Okay. One is a lot of talk, especially because of that Atlanta scenario where the Bills and Bengals would have been moved had there been you know, the need for a neutral site game. Are you in favor of neutral site conference championships? The idea seems good. It does. Like, man, yeah, you even playing field. But I still say the other part of it is no, absolutely not, man. And uh, I've had this conversation recently about that. Like, what does home field advantage mean? Why do we speak about home field advantage if you still got to go to a neutral site? We're pretty much playing college ball if that's the case. I know it maximizes the group that's in front of you. The 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 you know the location kind of matters a little bit, but I think it's cool to watch a home base host playoff game after. There's nothing like that home advantage, man. That that really resonates to the crowd. I think you build up fans for a lifetime when you have that type of stuff that happening. I'll never forget hosting. The, the AFC Championship game in Pittsburgh and what that looked like and what that felt like and the environment of it all, man, that's huge. No NFL. And this is the other part, too. Other part of it, too, is the game in itself for the, the regular consumer has become super expensive from inside the stadium purchases, jerseys, travel. So you mean to tell me my team's done well and – the old ways of doing it, my team won well, won at home, continue to win at home. Now we get to host it. So I got to also not only buy my ticket, but I got to go to another site that I got to watch my team. So what if I'm in Pittsburgh on the AFC side and on the NFC side, it's the Giants or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's Pittsburgh versus um, the Chargers and we got to fly into Phoenix. Well, that's a more expensive flight for the Pittsburgh team than it is probably for the Chargers team. You know what I'm saying? I don't like the idea of that just because you want to market something. I'm not on board with it. And that's all it is. Yeah. I I mean, and, 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 and someone who worked with the National Football League Players Association for years, you can understand that this would just be a money grab. It is. <laughs> and think about how we try to say this is a family league and, man, bring your family out to the ball game. Well, heck, if I got to pay $125 per ticket for four people, then I got to get four flights for all of us to go enjoy our team who have home field advantage. We're out of, I mean, most flights right now, I checked the other day just for, you know, just to check to see what South, you know, certain what uh, flights were doing. And it was about like 750 I was like, geez, because we're trying to plan like spring break, like 750 to go to Phoenix for four people. Oh, yeah. I, I, I to mean, consume a game. I, I, I don't like this on so many levels that I can't believe it even comes up, to be honest with you. Um, but just sticking strictly from the Pittsburgh perspective. Yeah. No. No. Because <laughs> there will never be a Super Bowl here because we don't have a roof on a thing and because we're Thank not you. New York. Okay. Right. And you, as someone who participated in a conference championship games, mm-hmm. okay, here, you know what that's like. Oh, my gosh. Okay? It's an advantage, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, you <laughs> earned that. You worked for that. Oh. And, I, and to, to just throw that away because, oh, well, you no. know, this is the way it's supposed to be just doesn't. How about, how about another one? I understand that the weather didn't exactly favor Buffalo because Cincinnati oh. was nails tough over the weekend. But in a normal setting, yeah, okay, and you get a team like, you know, when you guys got Miami and they had to come up here and play in the swamp and everything, yeah. uh, it makes a difference. It, it, it does. Like it, it's, as far as the intimidation factor of it, too. Like to think that we would have a playoff game in Baltimore or something like that one year. That's something I never wanted because uh, most fan bases that have those types of teams or who have had that type of drought. Like imagine if 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 the Cleveland Browns host a AFC Championship game. DK, do you understand the fandom? The the the, the type of people lining up for days to get into a parking lot to tailgate just to act like rabbit fans as you walk out of there for a simple warm-up, that's what the NFL gives the fans. And I think that in itself should be one of the main reasons you say, you know what, good idea, not now, not ever. Yeah, not now and not ever. As far as the four teams go, 
Uh, one of the four I want to get to before we get into any kind of matchups here are the Dallas Cowboys because it's just way too much fun. <laughs> uh, th- this team yeah. overrates itself. Its fan base overrates them every year, every, every year. And and they don't really get anywhere. It's been forever. I want to say since 1996 or something. 95 or 6, yeah. 96, yeah. Well, right, since they – I mean, that was – I think that was the year that they ended uh, They ended up beating the Steelers. Was Jimmy Johnson out like the next year or something like that? I forget something, his lineage. Yeah, I have to look that up. Something like that. Uh, I don't follow the Cowboys as much as Cowboys fans think that the rest of the country follows them, okay? <laughs> however, however, in this case – the team's website. Yeah. Team website had a headline on an article earlier today. It's been changed since then that said Dak gives the ball away twice in Cowboys loss to Moan, take it from somebody who's inside the journalism business. Okay. Yeah. Team websites don't ever do that. Well, ever, what? ever, ever. That came from Jerry. It had to. What do you mean? He, they, they, he got rolled over by a bus? Is that what you're saying in that I'm headline? Saying he, oh, <laughs> my goodness. Yeah, now the headline now says Dak on loss to 49ers, colon, unacceptable, 100% on me. But the first sentence of the story remains. I'm looking right at it. Dak Prescott yeah. gave away the ball twice in the narrow loss to the 49ers. Self-inflicted wounds. This was essentially authored. By yeah. Jerry Jones, who is a petulant child of an owner and remains as such. Yes, he does, man. And this is one of those things where I say, like, like Stiller fans, like, calm down when it comes to, like, the advancement of your team. You don't have to worry about upstairs management doing these types of things. I saw the post game of it, too. Immediately after, he's trying to give credit to the 49ers, but he's so ready to put blame on somebody on his Cowboys team. It Why was is he sad. doing a post game? I like, have no idea. You know how often I've interviewed the owner of a franchise <laughs> after a game? And, and you know what? What our what what Mr. Rooney and them would say when they come in afterwards mm. to shake everybody's hand? Good game. Good game. Hey, good win. That's all you get from them because they understand not necessarily what their role is because they got a huge role as far as the Steelers and the team is concerned. But you look at that and you say, I appreciate that. We do the football thing and win games for you guys. Like, Jerry is a – what is he in the journalist world, DK? <laughs> Soundbite? Well, sure. Don't get me wrong. If I'm covering the Cowboys, I'm all over that, okay? Jeez. I'm just saying that it's it's bizarre for an owner to be down there doing post-game analysis. Sad. You know? And it's Sad. just it, – it, it's a crazy thing. And for anybody who's been complaining about the Roonies, tough start to the year, this and that, didn't fire Matt Canada and whatever else here, I am telling you, count your blessings – because this is what the other type of owner gets you. It's a yeah. lot of bombast. It's a lot of talk. They're the hot topic on a lot of the national shows. And they get nowhere. And, yeah, I know the Steelers haven't won a playoff game in a long time either. But the point stands. Yeah. You don't have that. And they did all of that to get, as you said, nothing. Nothing at all. When we come back, we will look at these four remaining teams. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. As promised, to look at the four NFL semifinalists, and it's a it's a good group, Moan. And I understand that's generally a self fulfilling statement because you got to be really good just to leave twenty eight other teams out. Yeah, but it's a good group. There's not a fluke in there. Uh, you can see a legit strength in there. There aren't any upsets uh, really mm-hmm. along the way here. Cincinnati versus Kansas City can't do a lot better than that. Philadelphia versus a significantly underappreciated San Francisco team. Yeah. Um, who's the best of them? I'm not asking you for a Super Bowl winner yet, but who's mm. the best team right now? God, DK, you you going to put me on the spot with something I like am, this? I am, but that's when it's most effective, Moan. If I tell you in advance, hey, Moan, guess what? I'm going to ask you for your – that's no fun. Uh, that's that's very true, and you're 100% correct on that one because, geez, like I look at this and I say to myself, 
Each one of these teams have been on win streaks, other than Philly because Jalen Hurts was out, right? Other than Philly, every single one of them are almost close to double-digit win streaks, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. They're, they're, they're all one or two in their division when it breaks down also. They all, for the most part, except for San, San Francisco, have a guy at quarterback. And the more and more Brock Purdy puts it together, the better it looks for them and the worse it looks for Jimmy G and, and Trey Lance moving forward, too. Like, I, I know that's, you know, the idea, no, you got to go get a big-time guy. Jalen Hurts isn't a big-time guy, either when you look at his draft status and what he was coming out of college. Uh, with the way he was benched at Alabama, had to go to a different school. I, could, I said all of that to get to this point, okay? I think the best team may be Philadelphia. I think the hottest team is a tie between – Tie. God, yo, it's, it's, a it's, it's a tie between, and I'm gonna probably give the edge here. The hottest team, San Francisco and Cincinnati. The hot tur is team is probably Cincinnati, though. Yeah, I was gonna say the the thing with the Bengals, and, and we've talked about them, all, you know, uh, on yesterday's show. But the thing with the Bengals is that that catches people off guard is the defense. Everybody thinks it's all about Joe Burrow and. And Jamar Chase and everything, and don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking those guys, but no, uh, I happen to agree with Philadelphia robustly. Having Hurts out doesn't, you know, no. that doesn't affect your record. I like to do a thing uh, over the course of a season where I measure how a team does against Pittsburgh. This is in any sport because I get to see them with my own eyes. I'm in mm-hmm. their press box. I'm hearing the vibe of the other reporters. Uh, when they talk about that team and you get to know a little bit more about them. Okay. Yeah. And the team that impressed me most, most to my eyeballs. Yes. Was Philadelphia. There's no way that it couldn't be. Okay. They absolutely dominated the Steelers in that final game before the bye week but even that's not it. I can't believe I have to bring this up with you. Do it. But, but how does Philadelphia win? How? Well, how? It's, it's, um, old, it's right. It's right there. It's they're the, they're like, O and D trenches. line. Yeah, both sides of it. Yeah, both sides of it. And, both and sides of it, Moan. Let's, let's yeah. add this. That doesn't go into a slump. It, it doesn't. It can't because you're dealing with guys who are the strength of your team, which is why I think the 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 teams have highlighted it or the media has highlighted it also the importance of the O-line and D-line because a a quick pro tip and I'm sure you've heard this before I even got with the Steelers too Mm -hmm. the game is won and lost in the trenches yes right coaches have been saying it (laughs) they've been saying it for so long but but the majority of the, the major media folks haven't picked up on that right up until lately to where these young superstar quarterbacks come into the league and you feel like well we gotta protect them uh, Philly, Philly to me, I think it's the it's the strongest team. But what what uh, Cincinnati is doing, it can't be underestimated, man. It simply uh, can't. I I think it could make for a spectacular Super Bowl. I really do. Presuming both sides go in healthy. Presuming they advance, obviously. But where what? I can't get past the Eagles, I'm mm-hmm. sorry, just to finish this thought on oh, Eagles. Go ahead. Is when you watch Jalen Hurts run the ball, when you watch Miles Sanders, shout out to Woodland Hills High School because there just can't be enough Pittsburgh kids uh, playing this deep into the playoffs. Uh, when you watch Miles Sanders and these guys, and they're running the ball with just a seeming visible yeah. effortlessness. Yeah. I'm sorry. I can't look away from that team. Okay, the no. Eagles, the Eagles are doing football right. And if it's and if anyone locally wants to get excited about something other than having the Woodland Hills kid uh, being part of that offense, it's that Andy Weidel, who's now Omar Khan's right hand man here, yeah, he was a huge part of building that Philadelphia team on both sides of the ball, including being instrumental in taking who away from Pittsburgh, Moan Javon Hargrave, mm-hmm. because yes. that's how you do it. Yes, that's how you do it. Yes, uh, and 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 with that being said, you, you still find yourself in a similar situation where the quarterback does his job simply. He won't go out the side of the box too much. He stays in his lane. He make the correct throws. Uh, and I guess just to circle that into Pittsburgh, truthfully, that's all we're looking forward to 
as far as Kenny Pickett goes. If we're just being real about where he's at, you want that out of him with a level of consistency game in and game out. Jalen Hurts doesn't hurt his team. He helps his team. He is an asset. And I think with the proper growth and, of course, DK, it's this soft, uh, soft subject anyway, with the, with the proper offensive plays called for him, that's catered for him, which is what they're doing with Jalen Hurts, then you have a winning recipe. I'm not saying, and you're not saying that either, but you do have some of the pieces in place, DK, that says they're going to draft well. They're going to do free agency better than they have in years past, I hope. Because give Kev his credit. His credit. Majority of what he did was through the draft, correct? Mm -hmm. Majority of what he did was through the draft, and you helped retain or you went and found those scoutable guys on the back end of their careers to get the most out of them. DHB, Darius Hayward Bay being one of those guys. There's other guys on that list, too. You say, man, Flozell Adams, how you get the uh, year or two out of him. You know what I'm saying? Like, those are the two dudes that pop up. And But I look at Omar, and I almost kind of say to myself, well, is he going to play in, in uh, free agency a little bit more than Kev actually did? I'm really looking forward to these games, and, and I don't always say that. I don't. I don't just mouth that every year. I, I think you've right. got some terrific matchups here. Um, I absolutely love the fact that the AFC North is part of it, though, Moan. And Me you too. and I were talking off camera because you said something. You have to share it with the group before we even started we started recording here. Oh, uh, which part of it was the AFC, it? The AFC North. Oh, you brought this up. And we had this conversation, like it being very much battle tested, like yeah. it being AFC North style of ball. And I've heard uh, a new GM candidate kind of say this. This is still a big man's game. The way that Cincinnati defense ran through Buffalo, the way they find ways to grudgingly get wins, ugly, it don't matter. And truthfully, this is the other part to it. If you look at every team in AFC North, if given the opportunity with right health, good quarterback play, the running backs all follow. Every single team has a guy. And that's where the dagger in the back got Buffalo uh, on Sunday. Could you pull for the Bengals? Could you do that? 100%. I'm good on that one. Yeah. Yes. Because and, of that? Yes, because of that. Yes. Like, they they got it together, man. I I, I look at them and I can't deny it. I want to. And I'm going to hate on them preseason. <laughs> you know that's going to be true. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to slander them. I don't care if they win it. They're still going to get slandered, okay? Uh, but Joe Burrow is ice cold. His poise is built for playoff ball. Uh, and he's got this swagger the same way, y'all, let's be real. The same way uh, Baltimore gave it to Joe Flacco. Even he had it. The same way Pittsburgh gave it to Ben. Just say it. He's an AFC North quarterback. He's an AFC North and he quarterback. And sh he showed that in his very first season. You know, yeah. I mean, you have to – for people who don't know, and Moan obviously does, Yeah, they'll go around a locker room, yep. and, and you guys will, and say that's an AFC North game you played. It is. Uh, that, that's a divisional game. You, you're an AFC North uh, wide receiver. You know, mm -hmm. you know when, when Juju takes down, I don't care if it was dirty or not, when Juju takes down Vontez, yeah. AFC North, that was his AFC North indoctrination, you know? And people, even the fans notice it. If somebody's mm -hmm. out there being soft, the fans call that out too. Like, yeah. it's noticeable. Looking at George Pickens, bully people. Looking at Najee, bully people, you're seeing AFC North traits. Like, there is a style at the combine. The the the, the four teams that uh, interviewed me, all AFC North teams, You they have a type. Are you serious? I wouldn't lie to you. You've never told me that. Every single That's team. That's absolutely I, amazing. I was an AFC North type. Yep. 100%. Man, you learn something new from watching this show every day. That's incredible. I, I'm not letting you off of that. It was all four of those teams. And they, yeah. And they came to you saying what? Just my style of play. What can I bring to them? And I think when you look at the way I played in Pittsburgh, everybody in the AFC North had bigger linemen. I was a bigger lineman. The attitude aspect of how we played at Tennessee, the pro-style football that we played where the pool right. and pinning, it right. lined up with what they were seeking out. I remember specifically sitting in front of Marvin Lewis, having a conversation with him about similar things. I had conversation with Pittsburgh. The same angst, the same looking over your shoulder feel. It was a grueling understanding that they had a type of guy that they were looking for, and I was a part of that mold, and it fit in. The respect factor has always been there.
We are doing a whole show on this at some point this summer. When we come back, though, the only segment that matters. That's hey, Mo. Welcome back to the Ron Foster Show and the only segment that matters, which is always brought to you by the Get-Go Cafe and Market, where three expert chefs fine-tune every detail so that every sub burger, salad, wrap, drink, and app is crafted for what they call crave ability. Order your favorite entry at the Get-Go Cafe and Market today. Better believe it. Moan, before we get to the the actual question, uh, I heard or we heard yesterday from uh, uh, Kun Shohei, and I apologize if I'm not getting the mm-hmm. name right, who says, says, hey, Moan and DK, I don't have a question today, but please give me a shout out. I'm a loyal subscriber from Vientiane, Laos. That's over by Vietnam, Moan. Nice. I, I listen to you guys every morning on my treadmill run. Uh, I'm. It's been two decades since, I, since I've been home. I'm half, living halfway across the world, but I still wow. bleed black and gold. Very cool. Very cool. Ah, super cool, man. We're international now, DK. We're not really bragging, but we are a little bit. Yeah, I feel like we should start posting little flags or something up yeah. the side of the video. You know what I mean? Like a little like a little UN. If you, you listen to Ramon's show uh, from anywhere in the world, give us a shout. And also be sure to uh, hit the subscribe button. No doubt. Uh, which a lot of you did yesterday. Thank you. That was actually really cool. Yeah, appreciate that, man. We should definitely do a map of. We need a world, though, not just a map. But either way, DK, we'll do that. Yeah, the universe. Yes. And uh, I got the actual Hey Moan question today, too. This is from AK Davis, okay? And he starts off by saying, he or she goes by saying, always love the show, but I have a question. Let me back up a little bit. Hey, Mo. That's how you <laughs> Stealing got my right job. Now. Stealing my job. I pick up on stuff. That's what athletes do, okay? But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but he said, but they go on to say, we always hear that we need an offense to possess the ball, not only to eventually score, but to prevent your own defense from getting gassed by being on the field too long. My question is, can you help us understand why the offense – that is possessing the ball is not getting gas, even though they are on the field just as long as the defense. And he says, thanks. Also with the follow-up from Justin work that said, I've always thought the same thing. That's why you come here. Okay. For us to break this down for you. This is the thing about offenses and defenses. The defense, why they say keep your defense on the sideline. It's the offense's job. Well, the defense has the rigors of, um, having to make sure they chase down the play. You always hear defensive coaches run to the ball, run to the ball, because if they don't run to the ball after the catch, then that's a big play that's waiting to happen. If they don't run to the ball after a big catch, then they're going to offense is going to be able to ring up the scoreboard on them. They have to exert more energy than we do as far as pacing throughout the game. It is a run and chase side of the ball playing defense. You have to be in shape. You have to pursuit to the ball. That's all they ever talk about. You, you pursuit to the ball is the angle. Offensively, there's a pace to what you're doing, and there's also a replacement that actually has your spot. If a wide receiver George Pickens has three go routes. Guess what? He's got a guy behind him in the reserves that can give him a breather, and the offense continues. The other aspect of it is this, too. The five guys up front can pace themselves a whole lot better than the defense on the other side of the ball. Five guys up front because we can block, run, and we don't have to chase the ball. Okay, this is starting to make sense. First of all, this is a great question. It is. Uh, it, It makes sense because if you think about it, you know where you're supposed to be. Yes. Okay, that's the difference. You know where you're supposed to be, and you don't have to go somewhere else barring some really unusual circumstance, fumble, whatever else. Or it's the idea that even wide receivers on run plays, they can catch their breath in those plays as long as they're stalk blocking, moving them, and at least getting into the way. A defender can't do that. Uh, Let's say on the backside of a play, let's say we run 24 zone to the right. If there's a wide receiver on the backside and a man-to-man, D- I mean, with the uh, DB and man-to-man, he can take five steps inside just to block his guy and stop. Meanwhile, that cornerback has to run, sprint all the way to the other side of the field to make sure that he's on film being accounted for as far as hustling goes. The wide receiver catches his breath. The offensive line, say what you want to about us, and those run plays where we're, hey, 
No, no, no huddle, no huddle, no huddle. Why do we love that? We can pace ourselves better than they can because those five 10 yard outs that wide receivers can turn into 20, those 300 pound D linemen, a 280 pound, a 260 pound D lineman have to sprint to the ball. What happens when you sprint? You gas yourself a little bit more. Offensively, we know where the ball is. Jog it, pace yourself to the next play at the line of scrimmage. My favorite phrase of everything you just said was to make sure he's on film. Yes. That's another entire episode of the Ramon Foster show. I wish people knew how much you guys emphasized making sure that you don't get busted in a classroom film setting. Oh my, it is, it'll get you fired. You know, that's, that's just to make sure he, wait, where were you? I don't see you on this one. Look at this. Where anybody see it? Anybody see a 23 on this no. one? Where's 23? Oh no. 23 was lounging over at the other side of the field. 23 yep. sitting there in a classroom like this. <laughs> yep. Because there's one thing coaches say all the time at almost on any side of the ball with something like that, specifically defense, you can control your hustle. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yep. it's, it's, it's a controllable variable, as coaches yes, like is. to say here. Moan, let's do it again tomorrow. No doubt about this it. This was great, by the way. Can I just say oh, that now? Yes, this great like question. The, we had really, really good episode of the Ramon Show. Let's do it. Let's do another one tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be here if you don't get fired. Ah. <laughs> <laughs>